Head talk to you. Hi and welcome to your favorite basketball channel. My name is Junior Anthony Azuga and this is Hood to Hood Basketball. At the moment, as you can see behind me, is the ongoing Pops Mensa Bones to Basketball Camp. The first ever camp is holding in Ghana. We are here to bring you some highlights and have a chat with Pops himself and some of the coaches as well as some of the players. Stay tuned and don't go anywhere. Sure.
John Manu Planch, who is the vice president and the head of operations of the Basketball Africa League. Sabonsu. Welcome to Hootswood Basketball. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Okay. So, Pops, uh, tell us how growing up was like for you. Um, growing up, you know, obviously I didn't grow up in, in Ghana. I grew up in London, but similar to some of these kids, 
Basketball wasn't big where I grew up, and uh, I had to play a sport that the country didn't really recognize or a country didn't really support. And it brings you to me to why I'm here today, to, to increase that support, to give these kids other opportunities um, other than soccer, to, to play a sport that they love. And, you know, I just want to keep pushing the game, promoting the game, so that in the future we can inspire more players to uh, play this game at a high level. Uh, so right now you are a former NBA player and an executive of the Washington Wizards G League team. Uh, how difficult was it for you getting into the NBA? Uh, it was very difficult. I started playing basketball late and you know I had to work um, really hard, twice as hard than everybody else, just to, just to keep up. And then once I, kept, I was able to catch up, I had to do more to exceed and to separate myself so that I could uh, you know, make it to the NBA. So it wasn't easy, but it was worthwhile, the sacrifices that I had to make. Can you share some of the experience in the NBA with us? I mean, it was great, you know, from playing with the Dallas Mavericks when we were the best team in the NBA, when Dirk was the MVP, to playing with, um, to playing with the Toronto Raptors when, you know, I was the sixth man and I was a featured player on that team. Those are moments that, you know, I, I, I remember, I, I relive, and hopefully those are moments that some young kids can see and they can, you know, inspire them to keep playing and, and working so that one day they can be in that position. Uh, you are a Ghanaian, and how important is it for you to come back home to organize this camp? Very important. It's my responsibility. Again, like I said, I don't want in the next five to ten years for people to say that I was the last player from Ghana to play in the NBA. That has to change. And at a, at, a, at a deeper level, we have to build infrastructure. We have to build courts. We have to build, give these players resources so that they can continue to develop. You know, me personally, I want to bring together an academy so that we can have the elite players continue to develop at a high level so that they can get a chance to, to showcase their talents across the world. So uh, what, what would you suggest, apart from what you are doing on a personal level, what would you suggest that governments do to help like, improve the sports in Ghana? Just help give us the resources, help build the infrastructure. You know, that's part of the reason why I'm here, to, to meet and speak with the government so that they can you know, help us along the way, give us some funding. Because look how many kids showed up today. It was only supposed to be 100. About 195 or maybe 200 kids showed up double the amount we expected and that's perfect even though it was it logistically it was difficult with the t-shirts and everything but I love I absolutely love seeing more and more players come out here that means there was more interest than expected that means the future is bright in, in Ghanaian basketball so uh, hopefully more players come tomorrow and we have to get more t-shirts and we have to make more accommodations because then it's going to show the it's going to show the powers that be that you know if you build it they will come what have you noticed about uh, basketball in Ghana so far? I've noticed that there's there's a space for it. There's there's a future. That there's a, a large interest in it. It's more than I ever expected. They don't promote the game here, so you don't think that there's a lot of players that that play. But when you look at all these players that were out here today, it just shows that you know we're just going notice, and we're only in a crowd. We didn't even get to go to Cape Coast, Tema. I mean to Takradi, to to Kumasi. When we go there, we're going to see more and more players. So I'm excited to see what happens. This was just a car. I can't, I can't wait to see what happens when we go to some other places. Uh, so uh, you've noticed that there's a lot of basketball programs around in Ghana. Uh, and then again, Ghana, Ghana is not featured in the Basketball Africa League. What, what's your opinion about that? Uh, we have to, there's no, there's no, there's no um, facility. There's no structure in place. How can we be featured in the league if we, we don't even feature it in our own country? So I say we have to put something in place. When the NBA sees that we do that, they will come and feature us. I've, they did it in Rwanda. Kigami, they told him, build this arena and then we will come. He built an arena in 11 months. In 11 months alone. So that just shows us that if we were to do something, no, they don't play basketball in Rwanda. We play basketball here. So if we build it, we'll, we'll, you know, they will build a facility and the players will be able to thrive from that facility. Thank you very much. Both. All right. All right. All right. Welcome to Hutu Basketball. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, so uh, Mr. Manuel Plange, first tell us a little bit about yourself. So I was uh, born here in Ghana. I lived here till I was about 13 years old and then moved to the U.S. for um, schooling. And um, I've been in the U.S. now for quite a while. Graduated university there. 
um, and then went to work for the National Basketball Association. I've worked now for the NBA for 22 years, and the last 10 of which um, I have been working and launching NBA Africa, based in Johannesburg. Um, and now I'm moving over to be the vice president and head of strategy and operations for the Basketball Africa League. So working for the NBA for 22 years, how did you get into the NBA? Um, I got into it almost by accident. Um, when I was graduating university, I was um, going to work for a business consulting firm and the NBA came recruiting for their management training program. And um, I put in my resume, you know, but really focused on the business part of the um, sport. Went through all the interviewing processes and, you know, got into the NBA um, there and then have moved around and worked in lots of different functions within the NBA um, for the last 22 years. So how has the experience been so far in the NBA? It's, it's been incredible. I mean, for me, the NBA is, is, um, is, is, um, it's an incredible place to work just because of the fact that I feel like we're on the cutting edge of everything in society, from technology, from marketing and media, from business, sports, etc. Um, you know, we really are right there on the cutting edge. So there's an excitement and an energy around the sport, and not just the sport itself, but what the, the sport is capable of being used for. So in 2010, you launched, you were part of the uh, people that launched the NBA Africa. How important is it for you? Yeah, so um, I partnered um, with our um, managing director, Amadou Galofau, um, you know, and we moved to Johannesburg together and launched NBA Africa from scratch. Um, and we've now built a business and, and a brand, you know, extended the brand of the NBA across the continent. Um, we started off really focusing on grassroots, you know, things like you see here, where we are bringing players, we're bringing coaches, we're teaching the game to the youth. And we launched our junior NBA program and now have it running in 14 countries around Africa. Then again, there's the Basketball Africa League. How, how did that come about? So right from the beginning, we you know um, have been talking and thinking about Basketball Africa League because of the fact that we feel it, it was always an important piece of the puzzle. Um, but it's taken a long time to build the foundation. But now, after 10 years here on the continent, we feel the foundation has been built and now we are ready. So when we talk about the foundation, there's the basketball ecosystem. So we've gotten our junior MBA programs in you know multiple countries across the continent. We have Basketball Without Borders. We have um, our elite academy based in Senegal. And now we feel it's important to put that, that top tier um, basketball professional league here. And what that does is it, it, it gives kids an opportunity to you know, really play the game at the highest level while staying on the continent. So when it comes to such programs, what do the NBA, NBA Africa look for before they say, okay, let's go to this country? To have a program there, what do you guys look out for? Yeah. I mean, look, it, it's 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 important that whenever you're you're thinking of launching a program, you are not just coming to impose a program from the outside. There has to be people locally that really believe in what you're trying to do and can make it sustainable. Without that on the ground local engagement and partnership, things will not be. Sustainable. So, for example, Pops and I are here now for you know his camp and to launch our junior MBA program here. But ultimately, we still have to go back, right? There have to be people on the ground here that can keep it going. So it's a combination of getting the basketball stakeholders on the ground, the business community, the government to all be involved. Okay. So uh, with the selection of the countries and teams that will play in the Basketball Africa League. Uh, 
what again did you guys look out for? Because I don't see Ghana to be part of, and why is that? Sure. So the way the league is structured is essentially a Champions League of Africa. So every country that has a league, then the champion from that club championship will then be eligible to participate in our Champions League, which is the BAL. We've chosen six countries that we're going to play the games in. Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia, Angola, Senegal, and Nigeria. These six countries are the biggest economies, the strongest basketball on the continent. However, out of the 12 teams, six teams will come from those six countries. The other six slots will then be open for qualifiers. So currently there are 40 countries that are planning to participate in the qualifiers for those six slots. Ghana has a chance if we put a team together um, to participate in that zone for the qualifying tournament. What, 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 the, what will it take or what should Ghana do to get a chance okay. to participate? Yeah. I think it will obviously be very difficult to do that in this first year. Timing is very, very short. We are um, launching the league in January and we'll start playing games in March. So I think what we really have to look at is at minimum year two. Um, you know, but building an, an ecosystem here where there, there, there has to be regular competition here and a professional league of some sort that can get started with teams that play regularly. That's the only way you're, you're, you're going to be able to field a really good team is if there's regular competition here. So you've been to Ghana for some time and you are into basketball. What have you noticed about basketball, especially in Ghana? I think the one thing I'd like to you know, give a lot of credit to um, is the Sprite Ball program. You know, that program has been going on for over 10 years now and has really captured the imagination of the um, schools here to where they, you know, they're competing at a very high level. Now we have to build on that and we now have to translate that into a higher level of basketball. What Pops and I are talking about doing here is bringing an academy here. Um, so we want to have an academy here and we also want to talk to the government about building more infrastructure. Now, if you think about it, one of the reasons why, even though Ghana doesn't have a team coming from here, we could play games here if we had a facility. You know, so I give the example of in Rwanda, the president there built a 10,000 seat state of the art indoor facility. Now, it took 11 months from beginning to you know, end. And because they built it, we're now taking the finals of the BAL in its inaugural season there. You know, so you know it's 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 important to show that you know as the old adage says, if you build it, we will come. So uh, you've spoken a lot of. So how important is this camp, especially coming together with Pops Bonsu? Yeah. So for me, this is very special because you know we are here. We've come home, um, and for me to come here with Pops, you know, means. A whole lot because I think when Ghanaians think about sports they only think about football currently and, and we want them to understand that there are people in the basketball world that are from here both on the executive side pops played you know for many many years had a very successful um, career both in the NBA and in Europe and now he's a team executive you know so you know it, it, it really shows that Ghanaians have the talent play on both sides of the ball, um, you know, and we want to make sure that kids here see him as a role model and also see what I'm doing on the business side of things, you know, and to note that we have all the talent here in the world to turn Ghana into a basketball powerhouse. Okay. Uh, without much said, uh, what three suggestions would you give the government if they could be watching now? Sure. I would say the first thing is what you know. I would really love to see is building of facilities, um, and there there are three different kinds of facilities that you could focus on. A facility like the one that we have here that are you know open to the community, 
to really engage more kids on a continuous basis. The second one is a national academy where you, you, you can really have you know, the, the, those kids who are interested in the sport, love the sport, grew up in, in the sport and play at an elite level, need a place to train and to really you know, take their skills to the next level. I mean, the third one is to, is to build a stadium. We, we need an indoor arena, and not just for basketball, but for concerts, for you know, um, comedy shows, music, etc. And that's part of what we, we you know, keep saying is there's an, a whole economy around that. Um, right now, when you know, concerts and international shows come from the US or they come from Europe, they go to South Africa, they play one or two shows, and then they leave. If they could have venues on the continent where they can string together a, 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 a concert series, uh, you know, um, series of basketball games, you know, it would make it that much more attractive and efficient for them to come and really do, you know, positive things here. Thank you very much for talking to us. So I have Mohammed Alaji with me. He's one of the instructors of the camp, and he's going to tell us what he has been taking the kids through and probably this is his first time coming to Ghana uh, to be part of a camp like this so he's going to share his experience with us. Hi Mohamed. How you doing? How you doing? It's good to be here. Okay so first tell us your experience coming to Ghana once again. Man this experience is great. Me being a Ghanaian, uh, being at home looking look outside looking in, you don't really feel the love until you get here and see that you know you, you share the same blood, you share, share, you share the same everything. And to see that these kids want to get out here and make it in life, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great for me to come out here and help them. It's, it's an incredible experience. Okay, so uh, how did you get to become part of uh, this Um uh, The reason why is because uh, my brother played 18 years in the NBA. Pop played in the NBA. I played against Pop when I was in Europe. Uh, we played against each other. Um, just, you know, knowing the good people and me being Ghanaian, you know. So I was uh, able to um, talk to Pop and... He told me, you know, he would like me to come out and help, and it was it was a no-brainer for me to come out here and help these kids. Okay, so what is the experience since you came? What have you seen from the kids so far? Um, that that they they want to make it, they want to help their families, that they love basketball, that they they want to work hard, that they just they just want the opportunity, they want people to you know show them love and, and help. You know, I just seen that everybody you know listen, work hard. And, that's what I've seen so far. Okay, so talking about opportunity, how do we create an opportunity for these guys? Well, it, it, it starts it starts with, you know, the government, you know, trying to get behind basketball. We need a national team. That's where it starts, so the kids can have something to look up to. They have to have hope. They have to be able to look up to something, you know. The national team, just like soccer, a lot of the kids look at, look at the soccer players and, oh, I want to be like them. So we have to have a national team in Ghana for basketball to succeed like these other countries, Nigeria, Senegal, Ivory Coast. Ghana, gets, Ghana has a lot of good players. And if we continue to you know, grow our players, we can be one of the great, one of the great uh, basketball countries. Okay, so uh, take us through some of the drills you, you took this case to. Well, today we went through, you know, since it was the first day, we went through some light warm-up drills. Then uh, I took them through some light stretching just to get them warmed up. And then after that, we did some ball handling drills. You know, uh, to work on they, you know, they they they, they handling. Um, then after that, you know, we uh, broke it down into uh, groups. So, okay, so uh, what, what's the future plan like for you? For me, um, I want to play, you know, a few more years in Europe, and then I'm making good connections in Ghana, uh, and I want to come back and help the kids as much as possible, whether that's camps, try to build some type of foundation, you know, and just, just I just want to help the kids as much as possible. Thank you very much. Man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Much love.
in front of the whole group and then you show us what it is. You understand? Uh, all right, so what's gonna happen is you guys have to get together and get a T10. You know what a T10 is? Okay, for those who don't really understand. Y'all move that together as a team. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Okay, so what's your general overview of the whole camp? Um, it's actually been amazing. We plan to have 100 kids here and we've had over 200, 220 come and we've had to accommodate them. Um, we've seen a lot of nice, young, raw talent. Um, but one of the things is this is the first time we're doing it, so we just came. We just came to see exactly what the participation would be like so that when we come back later on in the year, next year, we'll do it bigger and we understand what to bring in all the other regions. Okay, uh, so what, what can these kids do after today yeah. to help improve their game of basketball? So what the coaches are teaching here are usually what the coaches teach for the junior and the young NBA players that go into play in high school and then college in America. They are all fundamentals for the game. When you continue to practice them every day, everything for them to be great players before they start to learn how to jump, dunk and whatnot. These are the, the principles of basketball which make them successful. For the kids that couldn't be here for this camp uh, today, what should they look out for the next time you guys come? So what we'll do is in advance, we'll post it um, online. So make sure you follow Pups on Facebook. It's Pups M Bonsu on Facebook. We'll post it. We're going to promote it to everybody. Um, we'll know how to find you. Um, so we'll be with all the news outlets. We'll reach out to you to let you know in a month in advance so you compare in your respective regions to come. And hopefully we do it 
for a few more days and longer in the day. Thank you very much. No problem, thank you. I have one of the coaches who is, has been taking their case through some drills. Coach Lawal Brimer, welcome to Hootswood Basketball. Uh, thank you. Okay, so what have you noticed so far? Um, uh, what, what I noticed that uh, I find that a lot of the boys have uh, a talent. So we, we, have, we should be able to develop the, 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 the talent. And we are going through so, so, so many, many, many drills, which is bouncing, defensive, ball handling, mm, and, and the other things too. But what we, we are fun at that them. A lot of them don't even have a motivation or encouragement to where they came from. But seeing our foreign bases who are here coming at us together, we develop the kids. The kids, by seeing them, I think they have got some uh, good motivation for, 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 for what they are learning from them. We that we are here to are trying to impart our knowledge to, on them too. The only problem we are facing here is that uh, these things are there, they are good, but the, the facility aspect that we can use to develop them is not there. It's not there. So we, what we have is what we are trying to use on the court. We prefer for them to have a gym or something like a, a gymnasium that they can play in. But in basketball, we don't play basketball outside of town, we play inside gym. So we are telling them to, to, to use what that we have to develop. Till, till they work to the type that the government is ready to help us to develop such a, a, a Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Too. I have with me Coach Okan, who is the founder of Eagles Basketball. Uh, Academy. Yeah, welcome to Hootswood Basketball. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is my first time talking to you on your set, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy, man. Okay, so uh, how often do you think uh, this camp should be held? Oh, this camp, you know, it's very important for the kids. You understand? I mean, two days, three days camp, you know, it helps them with socialization and all that, you know. But I think we should do this every, every quarter. You know, it will really help the nation as a whole. Coach Mimi is the head coach of Ghana Basketball as well as the head coach of this camp. Welcome to Hootswood Basketball. Thank you. Okay, so coach, uh, you've been part of many clinics in Ghana. How different is this one? Well, uh, the structure is more or less the same, but it's like it has to be happening every now and then so that the frequency is going to get the kids learning more every day. You know, so if you do one in January and you don't do it again till next year, then they're going to forget. You know, so we got to keep repeating these things so that it gets ingrained and inculcated in their system. Okay, so uh, you've been with the kids for a while. What potential have you seen? So much. I mean, when you look across West Africa, we're the most athletic people and race in the, in the whole world, basically. People don't know that, but that's what it is. So um, looking here, I can tell you that I've seen a couple of kids, maybe 10 of them, who could definitely go professional if they had to go today. With a little practice and a little help, they'll make it totally to the top. Okay, so what advice would you give anyone watching who is interested in basketball, has their heights and wants to play? Set, we want a bat, a will fear. No, the bay is seven, eight, nine. Yeah, football in Kwan. And I'll ban a bia, I'll be bought. Football on a nipane dorsum. Ghana. See, yeah, I'm a sana. You're a queen in Mupa. Michelle Mano. Because they see the set. Who will say? Obi the bat. We did by 18 or Wapa. Now so 18 we trim. It is starting in term. We did by 9, 10. Now we start here. We be 10, 10. Now we are in the court. We be one Anna or China be or one NBA or America and all or UK. Oh, and our Europe. We be by our boy Ghana national team. I don't hear me. Say we be fair and cross for the now outside. Say we are black stars. We are no. We are Kofa Suleiman Taimu or Italy. We are there. We are banning our black stars. We fair fair. We are going in. You see what I'm saying? So the same thing with the basketball kids. When you have kids that are tall in your family, don't wait till they get to 14 before you start playing basketball. By eight years old, nine years old, your mother would know. Okay. Play 
Uh, where basketball is concerned for these kids but I saw the way they played and I was so proud and I was so happy yeah okay, so what advice would you give uh, like parents out there that their, uh, that their kids are interested in basketball um, look I think that I mean look pops has created a career from basketball um, you can create a career in everything you do if you're doing very well and I think that um, we should encourage our children. Obviously, school is very important, so they must stay in school, get their degrees. But if it's sports they are interested in, we should encourage them to do it as well. With like basketball, basketball, gymnastics, swimming, football, we should encourage our kids because it's, some people are not academically inclined. Some people are, you know, athletically inclined. So we need to identify the strengths of our children and, and you know, encourage them to build upon their strengths rather than, you know, trying to steer them in a different path. It's really not their path. So um, <clears throat> I think that we should encourage our children, we should, we should support them. Um, and you know, camps like this are very important. So I'm urging everybody out there who is either an athlete, who has obviously had an opportunity to play outside, to come back home and give back like this. And it shouldn't just end here, but you know, create opportunities for some of the kids that are even playing very well as well. Because I saw Rashid and he's amazing. So I'm hoping that he will get an opportunity to pursue this as a career. Yeah. Thank you very much.
most famous but that you've recently about on behalf of the Academy. The final day I have with me Mr. Frank who is from the NBA Africa. Welcome to to Basketball. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the general observations from this camp. I'm very pleased with what I saw, you know. Um, for two days, these young men and, and women, they just showed up, worked hard for like seven hours, and they gave the best. And a lot of them have shown incredible talent. So I'm very excited to be here. I'm very uh, grateful to have the opportunity to work with these young people. And I think with more hard work and, and with more support, I think a lot of good players will come out of this batch of kids that we had. So when, when you say support, what kind of support are you talking about? I think as you see in Senegal, right, you have over 20,000 people that showed up to watch the women's game, the women's play against Nigeria in the finals of FIBA Women's Africa, you know. So this is what we want to see. We want to see that everywhere. We want to see that Ghana, we want to see that Burkina, we want to see it everywhere. That's the only way we can grow the game of basketball and also the only way we can give more opportunities to young people in Africa. So everywhere you go, you hear Africa is now. We definitely need the support of our governments. Uh, they need to understand that when you're a leader, you can't see one piece of, one part of the, your population. So you have to be, you cannot be biased if you're a leader because if you like football, and you're leading everyone, you need to keep in mind the other of your of your um, compatriots, of your nationals, actually prefer other sports or are very good at that. So you need to be able to give resources of every sport, no matter what it is, so that they can actually do something with it and empower young people. So this is something that's very important. And I think uh, together, you know, with former players, um, and, and government, you know, private, public sector, we can actually help more people. Okay, so you are a member of the NBA Africa, hey, hey, and what what do you guys look out for to run such programs in in countries? Well, you know, we leverage on the celebrity of our brand. You know, as you know, the NBA is a big brand. Um, we have so many talent, talented players, current and former players that are really interested in uh, helping more people on the continent of Africa. So you see Pops Nesabosu, which is a former NBA player and now an NBA executive, team executive. You know, he came back home and trying to give back. This is something we have to encourage and invite more people to do the same. And usually, you know, camps like that, you see there's more players that might come out and couple years from now, they'll be the one to come back and give back. Let's talk about infrastructure. What have you noticed in Ghana so far? A country like Ghana is one of the top countries in West Africa. Ghana aspired to be a great nation. They are already a great nation. I think a country like Ghana needs to have a proper indoor. You know, we have Rwanda who just inaugurated um, you know, the arena, Kigali Arena. We have Senegal, which inaugurated theirs uh, months back, I think last year. So they're paving the way and they're showing us the way forward. It's extremely important. You know, we are in 2019 now. Can you imagine in 2019 some of our countries don't have a proper indoor? And we're talking about development. This is like the basic stuff that we need in Africa. So when I invite uh, the government of, of Ghana, I invite the private sector to actually think about it and give Ghana, the people of Ghana, what they deserve, which is an indoor arena. That's the, that's the minimum. You have countries that have thousands of them. In Ghana, we need one of them, at least here in Accra. So one that will make, make us proud. Thank you very much. Okay, so my name is Vit Azima from West Africa's Nice. Um, 
where when coach when my coach to, um, told me that we having this um, Pope Mesa Bunsu's camp, and I was, I was like I didn't want to come because my mom was um, telling me how to do something at home. But my coach managed to convince her, then I came, and when I came, I was able to learn mini drills, um, most which um, I already know, but then I'm learning. And then um, Coach um, Mesa Bunsu's um, camp has really really inspired me to. Um, continue playing basketball. I wasn't expecting to become the MVP, but it was really amazing. Okay, my name is Abdurashid Zakaria Kuta. Um, what I experienced from this camp is how to work with teammates, like how to work as a family. We are all brothers. We all came from different homes to this camp, um, and I feel very much excited to be the MVP of this camp. Like my first ever MVP, like in my life, I'm very grateful to God. Um, my name is Isabella. Um, at the start of this camp, I actually didn't really want to come. Then I decided to come and then I actually learned a lot. I learned how to dribble well, because actually I hate dribbling, but then here yeah, I learned how to dribble. Then I learned how to do the short fake, the jab, jab. It was a whole exciting experience. We played four on four screen made here. It was really, really nice. And I would actually look forward to playing again next year. My name is James Amoto. Yeah. This will be the first time I come though, but Charlie, the feeling was great. Me being the MVP, Charlie, everything was awesome. Yeah. My name is Sweet Awatri Atta. I'm from Timakum to 2. This is my first camp and I've experienced a lot of things. How to bounce, how to pivot, how to shoot, like a lot of things. This is my first camp, so I love it a lot. I wish I could come here again. Yeah. I'm Andrew Sni Lampi. Lampi. Actually, Pooks um, Mensa Bones Basketball Camp has been lit. I enjoy it. It was massive. During the ball handling, job, jump stop, how to box out during rebound. During the All-Star game, I enjoyed especially when the five out. And I really liked the experience of the coaches. Like they were great, teaching us a lot. What you are supposed to do when you're on court, discipline and order. My name is Abdukad Abdullah. Um, the experience I had from this program is um, learn how to pivot, learn how to fake, learn how to shoot, learn how to catch rebound. And I wish. Um, Popes should come back to Ghana next year or next two years or they should make it a different place for us to get an experience. Thank you.